So let me tell you the story of what happened on a flight to Kumasi the other day. Uh, we had been sitting on the tarmac for about 20 minutes. You know, takeoff time had already passed 15 minutes ago and we hadn't moved an inch. Passengers who were late for appointments in Kumasi started to feel agitated. Then we heard the captain's voice. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We have a slight delay. We are waiting for an important document without which we cannot take off. This document is not coming from our own company. It's from another company and it's not yet arrived. We will keep putting pressure on them and hopefully we will get it in five to ten minutes so we can take off. Sorry for the inconvenience. Now, my dear friends, let me ask you, what, what do you think about this statement from the captain? I'm sure to some of you it's absolutely spot on. He has informed us of the cause of the delay. He has promised to try and get to those who caused the problem and solve the problem. And then he has apologized. Job done, right? Well, let me explain why, as a paying customer, the captain's announcement left me distinctly dissatisfied. You see, when you pay for a product or a service, you are paying for a result, not an attempt to get you the result. I had paid for the airline to get me to Kumase safely by a specified time. I hadn't paid for an attempt to get me there. So while I was sitting there worried about being late, it did not fill me with hope to hear the captain telling me that it's up to some other company with whom I have no contract to ensure that he, the person who belongs to the team I had actually paid, it, it, it was up to some other company I had not paid to do their job before he could deliver what I had paid his company for. It was basically like he was saying to me, hey, uh, thanks for the money. I know you gave it to me to get you to Kumase by, by a certain time, but I may not be able to give you what you paid for. Uh, but if it's any consolation, it's not my fault. Someone else messed up. I am still going to keep your money though. Thanks again, buddy. You're a real gentleman. Now, secondly, wh why come to me, the customer, with details of the problem? I didn't pay to experience the problem. I would much rather hear details of the solution. So here's what the captain should have said. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize sincerely for the delay to our departure. The good news is that we know exactly what is causing the delay and we are solving the problem as we speak. The next time you hear my voice, all will be sorted and we'll be ready to take off to Kumasi. Thank you for your patience. Now this would have given me much more confidence that the leader of the team that I had paid to get me to Kumasi was in total control of the situation and was going to get me to Kumasi in spite of the delay. I think it was former presidential aspirant Mitt Romney who said leadership is about taking responsibility, not making excuses. That is all that is expected of a leader. At the end of the month, you don't want to hear your boss telling you that someone owes him money and so he can't pay you. And you can blame his debtors for your inability to feed your family and pay your bills. Is that what you want to hear? You don't want your father to tell you that he used your school fees to uh, attend funerals and so you can blame all those dead people for your lack of education. You don't want to hear your landlord telling you that he is broke and so he can't fix your roof and so you can blame poverty for the fact that your bed becomes a shower every time it rains. You don't want to hear your government telling you that they have used your health insurance levy to pay judgment debts or ex gratia or whatever. So if you are sick, you have to pay again for your health care. And you can blame the people who sued us and won, uh, or, or maybe the, the previous government, uh, you know, for, for, for our situation. We don't want to hear excuses from those who have taken responsibility for providing us with the things that we have paid or voted for. But how about us, you and me? Who is looking up to us to deliver on what they paid or voted for? When things go wrong in your workplace, in your church, in your home, do you assign blame to someone else or do you take responsibility for finding a solution? Ultimately, it boils down to this. You took the money. You received the vote. So you solved the problem. There's a popular scam where tricksters show you a valuable product like a laptop or a mobile phone in a package. 
and they take your money and give you a package filled with rocks instead of what you paid for. They call it 419. Taking someone's money and not giving them the service they paid for is nothing more than 419. Blaming someone else for your inability to deliver what you have been paid or voted to deliver is the same as swindling those whose money or vote you've taken. And if you are not a con artist, if you are not a fraudster, a criminal, then please deliver what you promised. And if something goes wrong, take responsibility. Don't make excuses. My name is Kojo Yangsen and I owe you a result, not an attempt. Good morning, Ghana.